So, V, thank you very much for coming down to YSP today. Really appreciate you coming in. Um, tell me a bit about yourself. Who do you play for and what, uh, what, what do you do? My name is Bertie Vasari. I'm 22 years old. Uh, I play for Sheffield United for England. And then I also play for the Greek national team. Uh, where do you play on the field? Uh, I play on the left wing. Left wing, so you're yeah. naturally left footed? Yeah, I'm left footed and I'm more of an attacking player. So yeah. you, your price tag's just gone through the roof right now, right? Yeah. For being a natural left footer. <laughs> okay, brilliant. And how long have you been at Sheffield United? Uh, this is my second season. Right? Second season yeah. now. You guys have, have had um, some media coverage recently about um, being involved um, with the, the actual ground and the men and the women coming together as one as one yeah. club. Tell me a bit about the reasons behind that. Um, I think since the beginning, since I've been at Sheffield United, I think the men's side uh, have been really supportive the women's side and I think they want to, to see us grow and hopefully play in the first division. I'm very, very proud of the uh, men's side as well. Well they've had an incredible season haven't they? Yeah. Uh, obviously currently in fifth sure. in, the, in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, have you met Chris Walden? No I haven't but uh, we've, I've been to a lot of their games um, and I really like the way they play and what they stand for and their values. Fantastic. And obviously being a Yorkshire club, that, that's important to us all yeah. here at YSP. Sure. Previous to Sheffield United, you were with Leeds United Women? Yeah. Okay, and again, they've just, again, recently merged with uh, a men's side in terms of one club, one yeah. mentality. And even on Twitter page, as far as I'm aware, as far as uh, we can see now as well. Yeah. Um, talk, talk to me about your time at Leeds, how, how was that? My time at Leeds was, uh, it was my first year in England, and it was sort of my the transition from, from Greek style football. English style football. Leeds were very good to me and I'll always be grateful. And you're a Greek international footballer, right? Yeah. How many caps in? I've got 10 caps with the senior side. And how often do you get up? Because you're on an international break next week. Yeah, uh, we're, we're playing against Ireland away for our uh, Euro qualifiers. Sure, it'd be easy to go direct to Ireland rather than to Greece first, right? It, it should be, but we're training in Greece first for a few days and then we're flying to Ireland all together. Why has been? Um, you're obviously aware of what we do, um, you're aware of the technology that we provide, uh, sports clubs, football, rugby, tennis, courts. Um, why is it important for people to pay by car transactions as opposed to traditional methods like cash in, 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 a, in a sporting environment? Well, I think generally it's the way forward. Uh, personally, I, I always pretty much use car payments or uh, Apple Pay, that's just easier. Um, it's the future. And at Brown Lane and at Sheffield United, obviously they take cards down there. Yeah. Yeah. I think the main thing uh, for a football club is to get all the fans there, especially for the women's game. It's really important. And I think that the supporters shouldn't have to worry for, shouldn't have to worry on game day about getting cash, and they should just turn up at the game, and it should be really easy for them to just watch. Do you find contactless an easier mechanism now as opposed to? Chip and pin and pin number and or anything else? Contactless, yeah. I always use contactless, I just find it really easy, convenient, and I think that everybody should have the luxury to use that. Um, it's good that um, more and more clubs and companies and you know they have the the ability to take contactless so to make it easier for the customers. Well we certainly see the rise now in contactless payments within stadiums ourselves. We've seen some of the big high profile uh, Premier League clubs right down to um, some of the National League clubs as well as Northern Premier League uh, clubs as well, obviously converting to uh, a cashless environment. Um, do you see that slowing down over the next two to three years or do you see that only increasing? I think, I think it's the contactless way of payment is going to increase. I think that's going to be uh, dominating in a few years. It's just it's just how it is like with technology, I think that's the way forward. What's the plans for, for, for yourself and me moving forward? Um, Sheffield United, you, you, you're there till the end of the season. What's the plans at the end of the season? Our, our goal is to, to win all our seven, the seven games that we've got left and hopefully push for promotion. Uh, we're going to do everything we can uh, in our side to, to make sure that we can. Um, obviously, women's football is, is um, hugely uh, on the increase in terms of uh, followers and viewers um, from the World Cup uh, last year was, was the most viewed uh, tournament in, in, in women's football history. Um, knowing that personally from uh, the Brighouse Town side of things, with, with us transitioning from the ladies to, to, to a women's side and then obviously amalgamating with the men, 
obviously it's not just professional clubs that are doing that, it's also um, non-league and semi-professional teams as well that are following suit. Why is there such a, an increase in, in popularity? I think it's it's time that women's football gets what it deserves really. I think for, for so long it's been, uh, it hasn't really been in the media much or highlighted. I think now it's, it's taking over and I think uh, the girls are showing like, their ability. Mm -hmm. Just talk to me about the, the, the makeup and the mix of, of the women's pyramid system. So um, first division is the women's super league. Uh, where all the teams are professional full time. Uh, then there's a championship for second division, um, semi professional teams, and some professional full time teams. And then uh, below that, there's the National League, uh, uh, National League, which is the third division, and then below that, the National League, which is sure. the fourth division. So, Super League is Manchester City, yeah. uh, Manchester United. Um, that obviously comparable to uh, the Premier League with events football. Uh, and then the level below that is the championship. championship. Yeah. So that's the level you play at, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, super. So you're the equivalent of the championship in, in men's football. Very, very high standard, quite clearly. And there's the National League Just after football. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. National League and the National League North and South, isn't there? Yeah. Do, you, do you see there becoming more and more layers in the women's game as it becomes more popular? Um, I think so. right now there's 10 divisions, so I think there's enough there's enough layers. I think it's more about um, getting the structures right in the team so that more and more teams are, work more professionally and uh, the girls and the football clubs are taken more seriously. I don't think it's a, it's a matter of layers, it's about the actual quality within the teams and how they work.